Hey everybody, it's Mickey, and today we are in the kitchen where we are going to be making some freezer meals. Today I'm going to be making freezer meals with my college kids in mind. I'm going to be wrapping some of these up in portion sizes to send along with them to school so they will have something from home when they get hungry. The rest will be packaged up for my freezer so that we can have on busy nights. First I'm going to show you the containers that I use and how I set myself up to make this whole process so much easier. So you always want to start off with a clean kitchen. You want to make sure that your dishwasher is emptied. You want to put a dish pan in your sink with soapy water so that you can drop things in as you go. It is really helpful if you set yourself up with a chopping station. The recipes that I'm doing today require a lot of vegetables and I'm going to try to chop everything all at one time. I like to lay out a piece of like freezer paper or wax paper so that I can separate um, by recipe the vegetables and here I have what I call a garbage bowl um, you know for the ends of the carrots and the onions and those kinds of things I put in there and then to transport my vegetables to my pot or whatever I'm making I have a smaller bowl that I can just put everything in here it just makes it easier to dump in my pot and get cooking so some of the containers that I'm going to use for these freezer meals are these half tray foil containers that I can only find at Harris Teeter, a grocery store in our area. I like these because they have a folded lid instead of the dome lid. So much easier to cover with foil for freezing. For the soup and the chilies, I bought these containers from Ziploc with the screw top lids. I got the small containers for individual servings and the larger size that can be shared. And I got these quart size Ziploc freezer bags. These are great because they have a spot to write what's inside along with the date. First up is barbecue chicken. So in my crock pot, you always start with your crock pot on cold. You never put cold meat in a hot crock pot. Um, I have about four pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I have them very well seasoned with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and Mrs. Dash. And probably two-thirds of this bottle of KC Masterpiece um, original barbecue sauce. This is our favorite. All right, so the chicken is all covered with the barbecue sauce. I'm gonna put the lid on, plug her in, and I'm going to set her on high. I'm gonna set her on high, and she's gonna cook for about four or five hours, and then we're gonna check her. I always check any meat that I make in the crock pot with a meat thermometer just to make sure that it's reached the temperature it's supposed to, but I'm sure after four or five hours, this chicken will be perfect to shred up for barbecue sandwiches. So I'm getting all my vegetables chopped for my um, chicken soup and my veggie chili. Um, here I have, um, for my veggie chili, I have celery, yellow pepper, red pepper, green pepper, jalapeno pepper. I have an onion to do. I'm chopping up my zucchini right now. And I have my onion and um, celery all ready for my chicken soup. So I'm just gonna chop up these zucchinis and start on my carrots and get the chicken soup and the veggie chili on the stove. For the chicken soup, we have celery, garlic, and onion, a little white wine, about five cups of chicken broth, three cups of vegetable broth. For the chicken, I like to use the rotisserie chicken that you can find at Costco. Everything is seasoned with fresh parsley and dill, and then I add a little over a cup of Stellina pasta, which is the tiny star-shaped pasta. Bring everything to a boil and cook until the veggies are soft and the pasta is done. So here on the other side of the stove we have our veggie chili cooking away. This recipe is from the Pioneer Woman and it has been a family favorite so I will be sure to leave a link down below. The veggies are cooking with about three cups of vegetable broth, a can of Rotel tomatoes, and a can of tomato sauce. Once I add all the beans and the zucchini, the chili will be just about done. So my 
chicken soup is all done and I have it cooling here on the island and I have some of my containers ready to um, fill it up to freeze. Okay, so our veggie chili is all done. It's cooling here. I have all my chicken soup all portioned off and I'm going to start to portion off the veggie chili in these containers. On the stove top I have my ground turkey starting to brown for the turkey chili. The chili meat already in the pot and I'm going to start to add all of the ingredients. Okay, so my chili is simmering here on the stove. Inside this chili is about three pounds of ground turkey, a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, a large jar of paste picante sauce, um, my own blend of taco seasoning. I have a can of red kidney beans and a can of black beans with some sugar, some parsley, some basil, and some red hot pepper. So this is going to simmer for a little while. Started on my spaghetti sauce. So for our last meal of the day, I have my water starting to boil for the baked ziti. I have my spaghetti sauce all ready to go. My poor stove is kind of destroyed from all the cooking that we have done today. I have my chili cooling and getting ready to portion out. Everything all set up to start to assemble my ZDs. I'm going to make um, two four and a half, five hours, and I think our barbecue chicken is all done. So we're gonna shut it off and unplug. And as you can see, it is practically falling apart now. So we're just going to um, shred it with two forks and let it cool off a bit, and then we'll package it up for the freezer. So the chicken is all shredded now and it's cooling off a little bit in the crock pot and I like to use the um, quart size Ziploc freezer bags to um, freeze portions of the barbecue chicken and I just use my tongs to pick it up and put it in, in the bag. And I feel, fill it about halfway depending on if it's like, you know, for the family or for one of the kids to take up to school. Then I put about three bagged portions of the barbecue chicken in another labeled gallon size freezer bag. So we are done for the day. I was able to make about 22 portioned freezer meals split between five different recipes. I hope that you'll leave me a comment down below and let me know what kind of things that you guys make for your freezer meals. I will try to link as many recipes as I can in the information bar down below. I hope you will subscribe and please follow me on Instagram at my bashful life. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have and I will see you again soon. Bye!